Okay, we have the timer going. Can you please Thank introduce you. yourself? Hi guys, my name is uh, Scott Mahar. I am a history teacher at Northampton High School, and I'll be teaching uh, freshman U.S. History One this year, which uh, cool. spans the time period from 1750-ish to about 1900, some fun times. And what, what do you like about that course? You're a big U.S. guy. You know a lot of American history. What do you like about that early American history? I like that American early, you know, I like it even more today because it's about mm -hmm. the foundation of a country. It's about the basis of laws and, 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 and it, it's less about how the country evolved and more about how the country was formed. And especially in today's society, when we're talking about protest and law and equality, it's so important to understand what we're actually talking about. And we have to go back to this time period, the foundation of the country and what they meant by those documents. So I think especially today, this is a really important class to understand. So when you go out on a march or you rally or you protest or whatever you feel, if you don't want to protest, that's awesome too. You also have that right. And those rights come from this time period. Yeah, gee, I couldn't agree with you more. I feel like uh, it be, after a while, American history starts becoming a story, but like the kind of kernel stuff is in the beginning. And Absolutely. Yeah, you look at tariffs. I mean, how big is tariffs in early American history? It's just Absolutely. huge. Absolutely. Yeah, mean, and, so, and, and the interplay between money and politics and, and how it all runs. It's so important. Yeah, absolutely. And you are also kind of expertise in the American Civil War, too. And so this is a, this, this, the, the level of acrimony in right now has an 1850s vibe for sure. Um, absolutely. We hope that it's not going to go there. Now, what about um, freshmen? What do you like about teaching freshmen? I like freshmen because, you know, there's uh, history class, if it's, if it's upper level, it becomes about understanding eras and content. With freshmen, it's also about skill building. And I think it's just history class in particular is so good for building skills that freshmen, many freshmen uh, don't have yet or need to develop. Um, and we're gonna in, you know, interpret primary sources. And um, my job, I tell freshmen, and I'll tell you freshmen when I see you, my job isn't to tell you what to think. That's not what a history teacher should do. My job is to teach you how to think. And then what you think is completely your that's your problem. That, that's, that's your right is to think whatever you want. And I respect whatever you think. My yeah. job is to teach you how to think and then how to express those thoughts so, so you can defend them. And, and yeah. so that's why I love this period with, with this age group. It's really formative area, uh, a formative time in their lives, I mean, when they're developing those thinking skills to, to support what they're hearing out there and hopefully to start making decisions for themselves. And yeah. not to think what their parents think necessarily. They can if they want. Or to think what their friends think necessarily. But to think what they think. And understand why they think it. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I, if we're teaching you what to think, that's going to change in five years anyway. Even if we were Absolutely. right, which we probably, we probably wouldn't be right. But if you have this set of tools, you're going to change with the times always. And just stay Absolutely. fresh. Yeah, yeah. And I think something you do really well, too, is that you make them love history. And so that's another good thing about getting them at, at ninth grade. You know, I feel like we're trying to convert them into people who actually like it, you know? And yeah. I think that that's, that really serves you lifelong if you have it. I, I, I always say everyone ends up loving history eventually mm -hmm. because they go through so much of it. They're, they start to understand it just almost by osmosis. But Absolutely. if you, you can do it sooner, that's even the better. Yeah, I call history a foreign language almost. Um, it's a vocabulary you have to understand. And if you don't speak it, when mm. people are having conversations in that language, which right, it's in English, but, but, but it, it's, it's a language. And if people make references and you don't get them, you don't understand what's being said. And I think history is so topical that when people say we deserve equality or, or, or whatever they're talking about, that's a history, that's a language that I think you have to be versed in. And if you're not versed in it, you lose so much as you grow older, as you just said, right? That's a great point. It will become more and more important in your life. And so I do love history. I mean, I love it. I love history. And I hope that, that even on Zoom, we can get some of that across and we can have some fun and really enjoy the content and build those skills. Yeah, totally. I always tell them, I say, why do we study history? And then they give me all this answers so we don't repeat it. I'm like, no, it's to get you guys dates. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're older, <laughs> you want to sound smart. There you and go, so if right. you're talking about equality, you really want to know about the 14th Amendment. You know, you want to know mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, now, one last question. What would you like as a ninth grader? Oh, man. If I could go back in time and teach myself, yeah. I was not ready as a ninth grader. I was, I was poorly skilled. 
Um, my brain hadn't developed. I, I blame my brain. It hadn't developed those synapse connections. I just wasn't, I wasn't ready to think real hard or real deep. I was often, I was a, I was a C, C minus student mm -hmm. in high school. I really was. I was not a great student. Um, mm -hmm. I really came around as I got to college, all of a sudden things started making sense. Um, what I did though, is I loved history. Um, I had a teacher who pulled me aside. He, uh, uh, he sadly got uh, terminally ill and they allowed him to teach one class hmm. his last year and he could pick his roster of 15. Huh. Huh. And he picked me, huh. a C student who he shouldn't have picked, hmm. but he liked me. And so from that point on, I kinda, I felt like, okay, somebody sees this in me. I must be able to do better than this. And so, I don't know. It's uh, almost, it's kind of, good. I'm sorry, it's, it is almost like a priesthood in a way, you know, mm -hmm. like that those of us who love history, it feels, it feels like, and we see that in our students, that some of them really embrace that, like, this is what I do. Like, I love mm -hmm. history. I try to understand the world that's going around me. So that's a, that's a really um, cool story. Last word, what's going on with the Red Sox? Man, I just say, just, just strap in, man. Just strap it in, let it go. Yeah. Just enjoy the uniforms. Maybe, maybe just dream about next year next year we are gonna be good uh yeah. this year's a wash just an, it's still a wash it's thankful it's the 60 game season we, yeah, only, we only got count. 27 more to go it doesn't, it doesn't count it doesn't count it just doesn't count this year doesn't whoever wins gets an asterisk this year. we don't want any <laughs> yeah, asterisks yeah. Next absolutely absolutely <laughs> we we decided not to play this that's year. right it was a plan it was a conscious choice <laughs> all right well listen if you you're lucky you have mr mara to teach you and you'll see him soon Awesome. Hey, awesome. see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.